peace must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Viewers, good morning. This morning, I want to address the issue of Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy. The legacy of His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya keeps on moving, keeps on going forward and forward. Since the handshake in 2000. And 18 that brought about the peace, the tranquility, the unity of purpose. President Uhuru's star has been rising. All over Africa, people are thinking of using the model that Kenya used to stop any form of violence, chaos on the streets after elections. As you know, all of you are aware that elections in Africa produce two things after or before or after the voting. Disputed elections, winner takes it all, loser doesn't accept the results. But the Kenyan model takes us a mile, miles and miles away from the normal type of democracy. The, the democracy, a negotiated format, a consensus format. A democracy that gives consensus a chance. A democracy that talks about Conflicts in Africa have become the daily occurrence. Daily occurrences in many countries in the sense that almost every African country, apart from the few, there is tension. One wonders where this tension at times comes from. Some of it comes from elections. A manufactured election, a disputed election results. Some come from territory. Some are terrorist based, like that of Somalia and the Boko Haram. Some are because of regime change, purely sponsored by external forces. But 95 to 96 percent of conflicts in Africa occur through the sponsorship of external darker forces that would like to benefit out of the spoils of war. George Soros stands as one person who has always been and will always be and shall be until the end a man who sponsors any type of chaos who does not follow which type of chaos he is sponsoring as long as it is chaos that can topple a person he hates in Africa. Many African countries have are undergoing this pressure, this tension, especially those that are conducting elections and whose timetable for elections seem to be coming in the near future. As a result of that, Africa stands warned and Africa must stand on, safe, on, on alert about the external forces that want to dismember this continent and create heavens of create heavens of war, create insecurity, create mirage peace that Africans have fought after 66 years of gaining political independence. 
It is therefore my submission that most African countries, if they don't look at what George Soros is doing, we might have a shocker one morning, one by one African country being pushed out and the leaders being pushed out of power. The events therefore in South Africa has proved from, from this detailed undercover operations. They prove that George Soros indeed has a say in South African politics. And therefore, we want to urge Africans and African heads of state and their military and intelligence systems to be careful and watch on the amount of money that is being pumped into their economies. Because some of the money could be George Soros' money that will end up to bring public disorder in most of the African countries. Thank you very much, viewers. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to Punchline Africa TV, broadcasting from Nairobi, all the way from the Republic in Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, and simultaneously in London and Harare. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, viewers, those watching us all over the whole world, wherever you are. This is Diplomatic Leaks program that we are supposed to show in the evening today, but due to the demand, the high demand, we have decided to show it today at, eight, at 2 p.m., which is East African Standard Time. Viewers, the topic today is touches the entire Africa. The topic today gives us an insight of what Africa is. What ails Africa? What is killing us? What is destroying us? What has caused trouble for us in Africa? Today, the entire Africa is in a debt crisis. Today, the entire Africa, three quarters of the countries in Africa have gone to China to borrow money. Today, the entire Africa has changed its course. Are we a victim of the Cold War that is going on, that is beginning to reshape itself? Previously, Africa in the, seven, in the 80s, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, military coups were encouraged because of the Cold War. The Cold War in Africa caused several military coups. One of them is Kwame Nkrumah's government fell. The first coup that showed Africa how the Cold War can be, followed by Nigeria, then came so many other countries in the middle where military coups or generals from the military woke up to go and seize power from the civilian elected governments. We see this pattern coming back. And as an African, I'm one of the few people who does not fear to say, and I never fear to say it, so that Africans take record of what I said. For more than 10 years in this country, Kenya, I've been warning Kenyans that there is a monster called George Soros. And the people called me, I hate George Soros. Some people did not understand who George Soros is. But I warned the people that this is a person who goes to overthrow governments in Africa. He comes to destabilize Africa. But America does not reprimand him. Can somebody in the world tell me why America does not reprimand George Soros, yet he loaned us money? Any African who loaned us $10, even $1, will be hauled into the Americas to stand the trial. But Mr. George Soros has loaned the money, millions and billions of dollars, loaned the bank in Paris, in a bank in Paris, sitting there to destabilize the African countries. I speak with evidence and confidence because when you challenge me, 
I'll deliver the documents. I'm never shy of documents because I have facts. Africa today is under siege. Under siege from one branch of CIA. The death of Patrice Rumumba because he was crying of Congo. The feelings of the inside operations that target Africans, that target African countries, that target countries like Zimbabwe, put Zimbabwe to the map of international community, isolate it, dismember it, pay the opposition to cripple the governments. Most governments in Africa are facing a regime change. Obama changed the people through NGOs. Bush is using CIA branch of George Soros. My fellow Africans, I want to state the facts here. I have been singing and singing and singing. In Zimbabwe, for example, George Soros has finished his job. Vanguard Africa is about to move in to train the troops, to train the paramilitary groups in Botswana, in South Africa, in other neighboring countries to overthrow Monagagua. It's a fact. You might dismiss it today, but you will see why I'm saying so. In Kenya, NGOs surrounded the Supreme Court, created the monster called David Maraga funded the Supreme Court, equipped the Supreme Court of Republic of Kenya. You know the Kenyans, wherever you are watching, you know what happened. It's not for me to repeat what took place. Maraga nullified an election. If you look at the, the NGOs that surrounded Maraga, who pays them? Who pays the Supreme Court of Kenya to survive? Open Society Foundation. Who pays Gladwell or Tendo? Open Society. Africa. Open Society. Sing, sing the name. Africa is watching. In 2008, this country went into chaos. Ambassador Rainbagger. A monster, and again from the American monster who pretended to know more African and more Swahili than others, came in this country, collected six Kenyans. Who funds the ICC? Open Society Foundation. Who owns the ICC? George Soros. Tell me. Tell me ye, you Africans, don't you see where we are heading? If they fail to take you to the Hague, they come to dismember you by paying demonstrations in Mombasa. The demonstrations in Mombasa are well orchestrated. Does it, do you, whoever it is handling the security apparatus of this nation, don't you see where we are heading? that NGO heads were meeting in Mombasa three weeks ago to do what? First, David Ndi and his group said that the NSGR is a very bad thing in the history of Kenya. And yet it is one of the wonders of the world if you fly above and see the train rolling all the way to Chigali through Matsanga's Matoke country. The world will know it is another eighth wonder of the world. Infrastructure is not a bad thing. However expensive it is, Britain built infrastructure. That's why it became a superpower. And taught us English we are speaking today. But there are people, malcontents, who pretend to have gone to university, who have studied on George Soros money. If you look at the background of some of these guys with doctorates, PhD, they have studied on George Soros' money. 
African governments, you be careful. There are ministers within the cabinet who have used the George Soros money to study. And they don't want to talk about the George Soros. When you say George Soros is a very bad man, they say Matsanga must be removed. But I know you. The time is coming for me to tell you how you got your scholarships. Africa must stand and the sun shine again. We shall not allow you. We know what you have been doing. You have been living on NGO money. You have come to dismember Kenya. We know you. And time is coming. We are going to tell the truth. Tell you. You hold people to the ICC. You wrote quiet reports to the ICC. You wrote to kill people, to finish people in Kenya. You are hiding again under the umbrella of the same people that you wanted to dismember. Shame upon you. Today, George Soros funds almost every opposition party in Africa. I speak with strength because I have documents right from his doorsteps of New York offices. Does it bother you that the, uni the building of George Soros is just opposite Trump's office? But why hasn't George Soros, why hasn't Trump pointed a finger at George Soros for dismembering and bringing chaos in the world? Because he's used. He's used by the Americans to get rid of the people they don't want. Many of my friends in opposition, including myself, especially those in Uganda, have always approached me to say, oh, we work together. I've said no. Anybody working with George Soros, I wouldn't like to be involved. If you go to Uganda today, the sanctions, over 2,000 Ugandans are under the American sanctions. You don't need to, to argue with Matanga. Take your passport across to the American embassy for visa. To travel to America, you will come back running very fast. Over 2,000 officials. The same pattern is being followed here in Kenya. I've been watching the American ambassador talk in various -ish places. And today, here I am. America likes people who talk, and we talk. I'm not a, a gun holder. I'm not a fanatic. I am a realist, an African, who delivers the real message. Wako might have committed his crimes. Yes, if we are fighting corruption, we can. But the way we want to fight corruption is not the way you go on by targeting a man and target his family. That, that law is obnoxious. We shall write to the American people to remove. Why do you, if you target me, why do you target the family that has not got anything to do with the crimes that I committed? But here we are. We are talking of Waco. But the list is bigger. The American ambassador has been very, 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 very difficult in coming out with the truth. He has a list. He warned us. He told us that there's a list of those that he smells, even just a matter of smell, that you arrived somewhere. <laughs> you arrived, you, 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 maybe you picked two shillings. You will go. We have been given enough warning. Today, are we surprised that sanctions are coming? Today, are we su surprised that the rain bug rained us, collected us, took six of our people, put them in jail, fixed them through ICC, which is paid by George Soros. Do we learn anything from it? Do we learn anything from it? The second strand of our difficulties 
You see, we have overborrowed. We borrow. And we are borrowing from my partner who is more superior or who wants to be superior with the person who doesn't want us to borrow. And I want Africans to listen to this. America borrows money from China. But America does not want you to borrow money from China. They borrow money from China at night. But they don't want you to borrow money from China during their time. My fellow Africans, watch. If that is not going to be how your governments are going to be overturned, keep this record under this step tonight or this evening. I want to stand here to say we are caught up in a proxy war. The tariffs between America and China, people are covering it up on corruption to come for us, for come for an African, come for one, come for Monagagua, come for the Minister of State for, for Security in Zimbabwe, and I leave Chamisa and come for Wako and leave this one. They are coming for everybody. The Kenyans' list is even worse. I don't want to say it here. But those who care to listen to me, talk to me in private, I will say it. It's worse. It has the most shocking names that they, they don't want to tell us. But where did the worker reach where he is? Is what we shall sit down with my panelist, one of the members of an investigative panel of my organization. We talk about it. When the nullification of elections took place, you remember the NGOs here. The NGOs know very well that the BBI is coming. And let the president of this country here. I have no more years to go back. My years go ahead. I'm 64. You never change that. And I have no regrets for having lived. They know the BBI is coming. They are aware that the BBI will bring tranquility in this nation. George Soros sponsored the NGO three, four months ago. The NGOs released a very damning report how the state had captured the BBI, how BBI is captured by the state. It was laying down the bed for people to reject the BBI. Do you not see that the people in Mombasa who were demonstrating yesterday were saying, at a BBI enu, we don't want it. When you have not seen even what is in the BBI, how do you say you don't want it? How do you say you don't want it? Unless you have a program paid to say what you are saying. If you look at what Boniface Mwangi is saying, is exactly what George Soros wants for Kenya. Don't you see the signs? The target, they are those celebrating because Wako is gone. I can see Abdullah Nasir, a lawyer, but they haven't brought piracy charges yet. <laughs> they are coming. They are coming. Abdullah Nasir, they are coming for you. Just keep an eye. They don't leave. <laughs> they don't. They, they, they are thorough at investigations. They know what happened. So don't celebrate because Wako is on the list. Don't celebrate because Wako is hated because he hates BBI. But celebrate ye, leave some tears for yourself. And I've always been saying this, leave some tears for yourselves. Because tomorrow, they are coming for you. It is a general policy all over Africa. Look at BCG in Uganda and the rest. Who gave them money to collect their signatures to take to Museveni to the ICC? 
Open Society Foundation. Who sponsors their campaigns? Open Society Foundation. Who sponsors Bob Wine? Open Foundation. Open Society Foundation. Look at that. And a real African like me, I wouldn't like to be party to being sponsored by a monster to destroy my own country. Who sponsors Chamisa in Zimbabwe? Open Society Foundation. Who is sponsoring the Vanguard Africa? Open Society Foundation. Who sponsored Kofi Annan? Open Society. Kofi Annan used to pick money from Open Society Foundation from George Soros. You think he was running to mediate in Kenya? Who was paying him? It is Open Society Foundation. Today, that is where things are. We shall tackle the relationship between China, the debt crisis we are in. We took ourselves to jail. We took ourselves to this level. We have now become a problem, a, a, a ping pong, a ball in, in the middle of China and the United States. Whatever they want to score their problems, they hit Kenya, they hit Uganda, they hit Zimbabwe. They warn you that we are coming for you. If you deal with China, we shall remove this. We shall do that. We shall cut down your medical bills. We shall do this. This is what we must expect as Africans. Thank you very much. Let me take a break. When we come back, we shall sit down with none other than my investigative journalist, editor, Samuel Tawish. And then we discuss. Don't go away. Keep it coming. Keep it writing. Why is George Soros interested? George Soros is in Hong Kong. He admitted he bought gas masks against the Chinese. If you come to Africa to pick a corrupt person, and there is a corrupt man near your tower, the Trump Tower and Joe Soros Tower compete in height in New York. Why haven't they turned to pick George Soros, who even gives people money which is laundered and corrupt? I leave it there and let's, let's talk after the break. Thank you. Today in Africa, we see a lot of uprisings, planning for uprisings, plotting for uprisings in several African countries. The events on the African continent, therefore, as predicted much earlier myself, in 2017, I said, Before 2020, 13 African countries would have undergone either soft regime change, soft coups, or violent regime change through uprising, which now seem to be real. The signs that and the symbols that we see are the real symbols and the signs that more is to come against African governments. What do we do then? There is a new method of changing governments strategically placed in the United States of America by George Soros. George Soros funds civil societies, civil disobedience, civil violence in Africa. It is upon you Africans and African heads of state, African heads of state, wherever you are, as you convene, as you plan to convene next month or before the end of this month in Addis Ababa, to understand the magnitude of this regime change strategy. 
Many wars are taking place. Internal strife, conflicts like the one in Cameroon, Amazonia, like the one in Biafra, Boko Haram, and then in Biafra, like the one in Libya. But the theme is the same. Regime change, uprising. Is it a matter of taking over our resources? You see the war in Congo has erupted again. Unknown militias have arrived in Congo, restarted the war, and it is going on. All this culminates to one thing. Are we ready to be independent? As I said last week, at uh, this week, are people in Africa ready to accept the results of elections? Elections everywhere in Africa are bringing the chaos we see. The people of Africa seem to be divided after elections or before elections. Is Africa ready for elections? Do we need elections in Africa? If so, are we tolerant enough to accept the results? Are we ready? Which method can we use in Africa to make sure that there is hope for the countries and there is hope and the future of Africa is guaranteed? Viewers, the High Court in Malawi today or yesterday ruled, was hearing a case when the president had already been sworn in. If the president of Malawi has been sworn in, then the high court is hearing the case. Is that not a disaster, an accident in waiting? Whether this will make us have a peaceful Africa remains to be seen and may God help us to build a better Africa. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the second segment of our show. This is Diplomatic Leaks all the way from Red Punchline Africa TV broadcasting from Nairobi. Viewers, in the first part, we introduced what it is, what is going on. Sanctions upon sanctions are being labeled against Africans. Every African seems to be having a very big problem with the United States of America. Is it our war? In Zimbabwe, we have the Minister of Security being told you never travel to the United States of America. We have the country itself in Zimbabwe under siege, under diplomatic siege from sanctions that have been killing it for the last 20 years or so. In Kenya, we have slowly, slowly, a dose being given to NGOs. We saw it. It almost happened in 2017. During the elections, the handshake cooled it down. Now it has come through demonstrations that we see coming up. People are saying demonstrations. You can't demonstrate where, you, where are you getting the money. If you are saying the money is not in the people, who are these people paying for you to demonstrate? Who pays for these demonstrations? We've been in the studio right now to discuss this and many other things and why we are caught up in a proxy war of tariffs. Any African country that has borrowed money from China is going to suffer the consequences. Waco is suffering. Joining me in the studio now to discuss this and the breakdown from his point of view 
is none other than Samuel Olesana Tawish. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes. Diplomatic leaks does not hide. Yes, and we are not against the American ambassador, but we have been watching his language. What do you think about his language? What coded message has he got? Oh, very well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ari, for this opportunity to be with you in studio um, on, on this program. Um, I, I think to begin with, the Kenyans were taken aback yesterday when we saw uh, that, um, of course, uh, information uh, coming from the U.S., um, especially targeting at Emma's Wako and by extension his family. It's something that has now elicited a lot of uh, reaction uh, from most Kenyans. And I think it's something that is now being widely discussed as to why now, and that is the question. Because now everybody is asking if at all Emos Wako has or was ever involved in any corrupt activity before or some time back, even when he was serving probably as the Attorney General, um, why has it taken uh, U.S. all this long, over 20 or so years, to come out and actually uh, publicly shame his name and muddy his name? Uh, because, again, reporters are coming now that uh, Amos Wako was banned from traveling to U.S. long time ago, uh, which, of course, is, it was in the, maybe the, some of the people were in the know, including Amos Wako, of course, himself. He knew that he could not uh, actually get a visa to U.S. But uh, the reason as to why they have decided now to come out and publicly, openly to ridicule and uh, expose Emos Wako just because of that points to a bigger picture than what we are seeing, Dr. Masanga. And I think the only um, thing maybe as Kenyans will say is that we should allow or give Emos Wako an opportunity, for example, to defend himself. He should not just be dragged in this mud, his name actually being uh, publicly ridiculed by everybody and people talking ill about him simply because the U.S. has actually mentioned his name. Dr. Masanga, there's one thing I would like to mention, that uh, U.S. to Africa wants to behave like they are, they are police, like they are policing Africa. They want to behave like they have the gate or the key to, uh, to actually heaven or the key to God to a point that they decide and tell you that Dr. Masanga well, today you are not allowed uh, to come to, uh, no, to, come no, no, to the let's, U.S. Let's discuss this. Yes. Tawish. Yes. Let's broaden it up. Yes. Buhari is killing people in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. Slaughtering beer friends. Paul Obia is killing people in Cameroon. Uh huh. Let's go. Let's go places where people are being killed. Yes. General Hafta Halifa is killing people in Libya. America has not raised a finger, despite the fact that America sponsored the destruction of Libya. Libya. America supervised Resolution 1970 of the United Nations General. A security Council to dismember Libya. General Hafta Khalifa is an American citizen killing people in Libya. No sanctions have been put on him. Paul Pierre is killing people in Abazonia. No sanctions have been put on Paul Pierre, despite the fact that over 10,000 Abazonians have lost their lives, displaced. In Nigeria, Biafra, people are dying in southeastern part of Nigeria. Boko Haram has not been gazetted by the United States of America. Al Shabaab is killing us in Somalia. The United States of America has not gazetted has not proscribed a shabab that kills us on a daily basis with Kenyans having limbs, walking with limbs, cut limbs with their eyes out. Nobody has ever sanctioned a shabab. Tell me, why do you look for a crime of 30, 40 years? It Yet, mm -hmm. there are people killing us nearby here. We would like to be happy with America. If America sanctioned Mr. Buhari and refunded that money to Nigerians where they don't have even a road. Nigeria produces oil. It's a great producer of crude oil. But Nigeria has no petrol at the petrol stations. 
The money is banked in City Bank in New York. And the Americans have the list. Mrs. Buhari has the highest $2.5 billion in, you saw that list of Americans. Why don't we repatriate this money to put it in bridges, in building roads, in hospitals, in clinics in Africa? Why do you run to blacklist a family? That has not even wounded a fly. Over to you. Well, Dr. I think generally it points to an act of uh, double standards. Uh, I mean, um, we understand that um, evil is evil, but in the human perspective, there's a greater evil than the other. What is happening today in the African continent, and more so seeing the reaction from the United States, points to, um, a, I mean, a country that is actually determined uh, to frustrate, um, I mean, the African countries and especially their leadership. Uh, because again, when you look into uh, examples that you've uh, alluded to, for example, Southern Cameroon or Cameroon as it is, Nigeria, uh, what is happening in Libya, we are seeing the crisis, for example, in South Sudan. But we have never seen these people actually come out to reprimand all these individuals who are actually perpetrating all these kinds of atrocities against innocent civilians. But they are so quick to come and talk about uh, Kenya or talk about individuals on matters that not uh, even resonate well with the, uh, I mean, with the populace, especially at this particular time. Uh, me thinks, Dr. Masanga, maybe uh, the U.S. and the, um, uh, maybe their agents, uh, suppose Kenya will not have taken the route, the, the route they have taken so far, in as far as peace and reconciliation is concerned. They expected us to go into turmoil, to be in fighting. That is why you see now, after President Kenyatta shook hands with former Prime Minister Ilodinga, constituted the BBI, and Emma Swako is now part and parcel of the BBI, the report is just about to be released. Now they come out and tell us publicly that Emma Swako <laughs> is one of those individuals who have been banned from entering into the U.S. Yes. because he's involved in corruption. And because, because yes. he's going to be the leading figure Yes. in producing this. A you know, on, on, on yeah. the team, mm -hmm. the best lawyer on the team is Wako. Yes, it is. Yusuf Haji is not a lawyer. He's an administrator. It's administrator. So they targeted Yusuf, uh, Wako mm -hmm. to, to destroy mm -hmm. President Uhuru Mwingai Kenyatta's legacy. Yeah. If President is watching or handlers are watching, don't take this thing lightly. And the, the, there is one thing that has annoyed me about this place. Mm -hmm. People who got scholarships from George Soros are within the government. And I'm going to name them and show them. Because these are the people, when you talk about George Soros, they want to kill you. They call you a bad man, this bad man, this man, this man. They, where did you get the scholarship? George Soros gave you, sponsored you to go and study. We know you. So people should tell the truth. There is something wrong here mm -hmm. that you target Wako, who was the best lawyer writing a BBI report to stabilize a country. Then you bring it at the time, because Americans hear everything. Even my lunch and the dinner, they know it. <laughs> if they want, mm -hmm. they can even, you know, send it through osmosis. Yeah. So, I am not against America. I am against the policy of Trump. And in any case, we are not against. And them. I'm not. We are not in, uh, against them helping Kenya to fight. Yes. To fight uh, corruption in yes. the country. Yes. And I'm not against anybody who is fighting corruption in Kenya, yeah. but fighting corruption by targeting and stifling this country, making this country go to pieces to the dogs. Ah, the apple to tapigana now. Yeah. To Tapigana, our international scene. Why did America not reprimand its ambassador Reinberg from forging a report to, to, to Ocampo? Reinberg at night used to forge a report in Norfolk. Reinberg, Hassan Omar, Makao Mutua, Gladier Otieno. These guys, I used to find them in Norfolk at night, 2 a.m. They were writing a report to fix these people. It seems they have never forgiven them. And I can see on the Facebook some malcontents who are writing, celebrating that the BBI man has gone. Thank you. They are coming for you. 
Have you seen the list? <laughs> Do you really know what you are talking about? Do you know the, the names on the list? Try to ask for go, that you want to go to catch you. Is it 103 or 403? Going to New York. Do you want a visa to America? That's how you will check whether you are in trouble. The list that is there is very dangerous. It can break this country. So let's do this. We speak the truth. Yes. We have not refused. The, the proxy war. The American SG, uh, see SGR as a threat to their interests in this country. That is the truth. That's why the Americans said we shall also build an express road from Nairobi to Mombasa. Mombasa. Why do you build a road from Nairobi to Mombasa instead of building a road to Lodwa? If we build a road, that road turned to go this way. Our oil will arrive very quickly. Yeah. But because they want to show the Chinese they are better off. They want to put 12 lanes to, to go where? To Indian Ocean? To, to shower in Indian Ocean? It, it does it make sense? There are people there out there, they don't want to speak about this. It is wrong investment for the Americans to tell us they want to enlarge the road between Nairobi and Mombasa. To do what? Why don't we enlarge the road between Nairobi and Alodwa? So that we can pick all the goods from Uganda. Yeah. Run them very quickly to SGR. It goes. But because they want to show a parallel line that we did this better than you. Mm -hmm. We have... Are we not in the proxy war? We are. Aha! Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That is the topic. It's a proxy war between China and the United States that we in Africa are paying for the price. We are paying the price for a proxy war. It is not only in Kenya. It is across my country there. You come and indict the former IG, Inspector General of Police. If President Museveni is sitting there pretty, He's already indicted. Because if they indict your inspector general of police, whom you are giving instructions, your excellency, they have indicted you. You know, they're not happy, especially with Uganda and looking onto the stability yeah. the stability that uh, President Museveni has put forth. Uh, you've seen even uh, the reports, actually, uh, authentic uh, information that uh, U.S. has actually promised even uh, to support and even fundraise for Bobby Wine. Uh, in the no, it, 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 it was there. It is there. It is very clear Bob Wine has been in the, the States. The, uh, pres uh, President, uh, uh, I mean, Museveni down. What does it tell you? I mean, these are people who are really interested. They're not interested in the peace and stability of this countries. They would rather have us in turmoil so that we can always call uh, call for help from them. I mean, that is the problem we are experiencing, Dr. Masanga. Otherwise, eh, why are they not talking about the instability in Cameroon today? Why are they not talking about Nigeria and the instability and the killing that is there? Why are they actually poking holes in a country that has so far actually experienced the tranquility that we are enjoying, like, for example, Kenya? It does tell you that they are not comfortable. They thought maybe with this kind of election and maybe the overturning of President Kenyatta's election, you remember in 2017, uh, that President Kenyatta was going maybe to reject that Supreme Court verdict and Kenya was going to go into chaos and violence so that, I mean, this country is destabilized completely. So they were taken aback when they saw Kenyans actually come out with resilience, President Kenyatta shaking hand with Railodinga and saying we need to put our interest, uh, the interest of this country ahead of ours. Yes. I think that is what is actually uh, putting headache on these people. Yes, because they, they thrive on chaos. Yeah. On chaos. And that's why you see the BBI is about to come. Yes. The BBI is about to be delivered here. We don't know when. So to preempt, to remove that utopia, is it, do we call it utopia? Yes. yes. To remove that anxiety. They gave us a knocker. Yeah. This indict Wako. Even if he stands there reading the BBI, he's corrupt. Yeah. 
What do you think the signal is? Yeah. The signal is to the president. Yeah. They can... are signaling to President Uru Kenyatta. And this, I have been watching the ambassador of United States speak in this country. The only man who supported BBI was Kodak. Mm -hmm. And let's be very honest. This one here, he doesn't. He's double standard. I want to thank the British government themselves. The ambassador is very quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's, he, know, he wants peace. Every, anybody who was here who saw the bloodshed would not like to tamper with what is going on now. But this one has come. He's speaking with two tongues. You see? If you can see what George uh, Boniface Mwangi is saying, mm -hmm. Boniface Mwangi is targeting the family of His Excellency the President. Yeah. It has become personal. You saw what he writes, and the people think we should not talk about that. Some people. When you talk, then they say you know more. We, I don't know more. We are aware, all, of, I, we are aware of their machinations. Yeah. And you are not going to treat them. If you go on with stupidity, this thing does not want children now. This needs maturity. Yeah. We must speak out. There must be somebody to stand up and speak and die for Africa. Yes. Look at the Africa that you are killing now. We don't know anything about we Britain that United States cannot give you the money without strings. China will give you the money. So the war that we are fighting is very simple. I've given you a very good example of the road. Yeah. Why should USA, instead of building the road, to take our oil so that we sell this oil very quickly and make a turnover and bring back money to the medicine, to hospitals, to roads. The USA has decided to compete with China to build 12 lanes to Mombasa. Not for the Amarines to, to drive to come to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think the lanes are for the Marines. Mm -hmm. The Marines could come in huge numbers by train, yeah. which is a Chinese train. But because they don't want to use the Chinese train, they want a road from Mombasa to Nairobi or from Nairobi to Mombasa instead of a train, a, a, a road picking oil from Rochiga up to mm -hmm. the coast. So which one is which Africans? My fellow Africans tell me, we have a problem almost everywhere. Look at South Sudan peace process. Who is delaying it? The same country. Yesterday, two days ago, when IGAD gave 100 days, yeah. they said they are not very comfortable with 100 days. They want to fix South Sudan. And I suppose they're the same people behind the scene who are inciting uh, the individuals uh, that are actually the partners in this particular, uh, I mean, um, peace deal in South Sudan. Of course. Uh, because where will the, somebody like, say, Riek Machar get the impetus actually to continually reject or um, give excuses as to why a, a peace deal cannot be implemented? Why will President uh, Salva Kiir really not heed to calls? They have refused. A peace deal? They have refused to fund mm -hmm. The project. Yeah. They have refused to fund the peace process. They have refused to fund everything in South Sudan peace process. But they later come and issue ultimatums. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they said they want peace now. Mm -hmm. How will you collect peace on a tree? How? When you don't have money even to buy a, even one, 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 one container of flour to assemble the hundreds and hundreds of troops, how will you conduct your peace process? Fellow Africans, time has come for you to value, to evaluate, to fatigue evaluation exercise. Do we really need these guys? Look at the, what they have done to Zimbabwe. Let's go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. I fought against sanctions in the European Union. I want to take this opportunity to thank Baroness Ashton, Catherine Ashton, Baroness 
uh, Beckett and others who helped me. Mdelet Mugabe is gone, but he knows we did fight for the removal of those sanctions. The sanctions were removed in Europe. America stuck on Zimbabwe. Do you know that America is telling Zimbabweans to allow this small boy called, the small boy called Chamisa, who cannot even speak English and uh, he shouts, he should go back to school and learn how to talk. Zimbabweans know very good English. Yeah. And very, very good, but unfortunately the leader of opposition is useless because he is a parrot, a puppet of George Soros and, uh, and uh, Jeffrey Smith and Dr. Anana Kofi. I know all of them. This that the people must tearing Africa today. Kofi, Dr. Nana, Jeffrey Smith, George Soros. Those are the people tearing Zimbabwe. The ambassador of America in Zimbabwe has become an MDC chairman. He holds meetings in his compound as if Zimbabwe does not have enough liberty to hold their meetings. He wants to overthrow the government of my friend Munagagwa. I've told Munagagwa time and time again. I've told him myself. I've told him be careful. Be careful. They have paid money Vanguard Africa has returned to Kenya quietly. Three weeks ago, Jeffrey Smith landed through Mombasa from Tanzania. Mr. Jeffrey Smith, the owner of Vanguard Africa, has been sitting down around that coast. They have seen the vulnerable places where they can touch the government of Kenya. When you talk this, people call you, oh, you know everything. Useless. Because there is, um, the people who started on George Soros' money, Mr. President, are within here. They are going to let you down. They don't want you to talk about George Soros. In fact, like now, they are feeling so wounded as I speak. Some of them just think, I wish they had the time to kill me. <laughs> Obviously, they won't be happy. Hey! Because this, you'll, you'll you'll you know, you know money. <laughs> these two younger men have forgotten. Mm. These are the people who sat down and wrote documents about you. But you, they must go to jail. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Can somebody tell me why Buhari's wife has banked 2.5 billion shillings or dollars in the United States Bank and instead the United States of America just tells us the money is here. And you don't ban Buhari's wife from flying to America. Now you ban a poor worker who has labored to bring a BBI report to embarrass President Uru Kenyatta. They come to um, here, here in the Indian Ocean. Tawish, don't be shy. <laughs> you, are an, you are a Kenyan. Yes. Speak. In the Indian Ocean here, the company behind the oil is an American company. That American company works with the Norwegian government. Norwegian government, Qatar, the Qataris, they are the main sponsors of the motion in the ICJ. I'm not interested. I'm very happy that the President Uru Kenyatta has finally sat down. That's what I was looking for. But I had to dismember the court first. I had to destroy the court, that small judge there. Not to be there. And someone here in this country was telling us not to touch the case. Time is going to come, we shall tell the truth. Because someone here 
is George Soros. I know them. When I went to the court, look at what America has done here. It's a double standard. Al Shabab kills us every day. The United Nations Security Council, in 163 pages, documented event by event how Al Shabab has been killing us. How many people have died in the Dusset? How many people have died here in the border? and in Somalia. When Kenya took a resolution, I want to show that uh, there is something good. Because these are diplomatic leaks. There are people telling another lie. I want today to say it here. Djibouti. Who is supporting Djibouti? Who? Someone was telling me, oh, Djibouti has a withdrawal. Where? Siri, you don't know anything. Keep quiet. Djibouti has 95 votes so far. <laughs> In the UN. UN Security, Security Council. I'm very well on linked. 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 <laughs> there are people here who think that... Ba, 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 ba. No. I talk with facts. Let them tell the truth. Tell the president. Chibuti has 95. Maybe it has come to 100 votes now. They are fighting so fast. So serious. We have stayed under thinking we are even supported by America. I swear we have a problem. We shall rush to do ba banners. You people in Kenya are very good at banners. <laughs> You like banners and the tents. Yes. Pa, 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 tuko hapa, mm -hmm. tuko New York. And, no. And boardroom arrangements. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is no boardroom. Someone, <laughs> let me tell you, you have talked something very good. <laughs> when I was fighting Rule 68, Dwale, you are watching because I told you to watch this, I'll say it. If you are not inside the chamber or parliament, I... When I was fighting Rule 68 in the ICC, some ambassador, a diplomat, came and said, we have made arrangements. We are talking with our people. You should not make noise. Mm -hmm. I told him, you, you go, go and tell your mother, not me. Mm. Because you didn't bring me here. Ah, I said it. I said, you did not pay for my coming here. So go and tell your mother. Because my mother produced me and put me out in pain. And I'm in my pain. Let me fight for Rule 68. If I don't fight Gladiwell Otieno, Ruto will go to jail. That's what I said. Didn't you see me on the floor fighting Gladiwell Otieno? I did. I did. Tearing her t shirts? Yeah. I committed a crime on behalf for people to be alive. Africa. That is the type of America we have. But who took us to the ICC? Who took us to the ICJ? Mm. Who is telling Faramijo? You think if America picked a phone and told Mr. Faramijo to withdraw that case, it will not be withdrawn? Yeah, will withdrawn. So he has a, a very big... Uh, that, he has a very big backing. <laughs> exactly. Backing from the big. I team. have given you the, the latest data mm -hmm. of this thing of United Nations, Kenya, that is Kenya is doing United Nations. Well, lie. Some people are lying. Djibouti has 95 votes. If I'm wrong, let the Ministry of Foreign Affairs come and tell me they don't have the vote. Mm -hmm. They have 95 on record last week. And they have not withdrawn from pursuing vigorously. Do you know why? Can I tell you please, a shocker? Please do. Because I like to teach students. Mm -hmm. Speak frankly on diplomatic leaks. How many naval bases are around Djibouti? Guess the number. Guess. <laughs> I, I can't tell, doctor. <laughs> Guess. <laughs> From countries, at least guess just a number. 
maybe nine seven seven you are you are about there mm -hmm. almost all countries superpowers have never bases <laughs> from america france mm -hmm. uh, everybody is around there Djibouti. Uh -huh. so you tell me you tell me i don't work for i i, I am sorry the Minister of Foreign Affairs should not misunderstand me. I'm, a, I'm an act and I'm an international activist. <coughs> and the way I. Basically, where, the backing for Djibouti is as good as done as it is. You look at that? Mm -hmm. France has a base, a naval base. Is it going to vote against? Certainly not. They are lying to us. We are wasting our energy and the money. They have divided Africa to that level. They have divided this continent to a level, the proxy war. I was all, all along coming there. Mm -hmm. Proxy war. You see the proxy war I'm talking about? It's a proxy war. Because Munagawa talks to Chinese and the Russians. Therefore, Americans will not back him up. A proxy war. Because Ramaphosa talks to Chinese and allows them, they empower, George Soro empowers Mr. Marema to tear Ramaphosa on a daily basis. Look at Buhari. Mr. Buhari is a French agent. On this continent. Do you know how many French agents are? And so is Paul Beer. Can I now tell you? Mm -hmm. I, will, I will not name one. For purposes. One has died. Obasanjo is still alive. Buhari is alive. Jin Ping. Have you seen them? Mm -hmm. Muhammad Faki. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Count, look at them. Dr. Zuma, Jacob Zuma. These are French operatives. Do you remember French gave intelligence to, to the Commission of Inquiry to bring down the, ja Zuma? No, to bring down, you know who? Tabombeki. Tabombeki. Professor Harvey Maupin, who claimed to know Kikuyu and the car engine in six months, better than Matanga, who has lived here, was a witness in the South African arms for sales scandal that brought down Zuma from the vice president because he picked a kickback. Professor Harvey Maupin was supposed to be sentenced. He was sentenced seven years in South African jail. Can you tell me how he mushroomed to be a key witness mm -hmm. in the Ruto case in the ICC? Is when I met him, I went and delivered a blow to Professor Harvey Maupin. You remember? Yes, I remember. He was kicked out by the appeal chamber. They couldn't even entertain him because I said... He is a criminal who has not served his sentence in South Africa. Let's move on. Look across in Madagascar. You see what is happening. Look north of South Africa, west of the Limpop, east of the Limpop, Mozambique, Renamo. It's a proxy war. It's coming. Who is telling the opposition in Mozambique to go to the streets? George Soros. Through the French, they want the oil or gas in the northern part of Mozambique, in the Ruvuma Triangle. Mm -hmm. You refuse to give them the oil or gas, you are done. These are some of the proxy wars that are being fought here on this continent of Africa. And that is why it is very important for yeah. Kenya
to understand it is paying the price of a war between China and the US. Mm -hmm. They have been our allies. Now they don't want us to leave them, but they don't give us what we want. They want us to adhere to the human rights decorum, which is very good, but then they have a problem of pinpointing out, frustrating this government. The BBI is a very good thing for this government. For you to come and name Waki at the moment when BBI is coming in weeks, in days. What a blunder. Wako rather, not Waki. Eh? Wako. Wako? Yes. Yeah, because Waki and Wako, especially, I wish they named the Waki. <laughs> <laughs> because Waki is the most corrupt man on this thing of ICC. He was a very corrupt judge. I don't know how he is still in that uh, judiciary. On the other side, a few weeks ago, because this is diplomatic leaks, yeah. and for me, David, I don't speak without facts. I bring facts to the table. Few weeks ago, or a few months ago, because if I don't do it properly, people will say this man talks, but he doesn't give proof. Few weeks ago, I want my uh, my people, Stephen, to bring this on board. There you are. It is on you, Stephen. A production team. Few weeks ago, Wako Mwiru fell in love at a bar. You remember that story? Mm -hmm. I'm now coming on the side of why they have dismembered. Why? Wako should have seen a sign here that the girlfriend, or supposed to be, went to fill for a visa application. And I can give you the visa number. You know, for me, I don't, <laughs> I don't do silly things. Mm -hmm. I'm your, your, your editor. Mm -hmm. She wanted to go to United States and the United Kingdom. She was, she was, Filimena Mbete Mwiru was rejected, a visa. Yeah. Look at that. Her visa was rejected. It says refusal of a, visit, of a visit visa. The name and everything is here. Ah, we work with facts. Yeah. We don't want, so Wako should have smelled a rat. Iko panya apu. Iko kazi na kuja mbaya. So this thing of visa, people should not celebrate. This thing of visa, if you look at quietly inside, inside, you look quietly, mm -hmm. Hey, Nikubai. The names that are there, it's the only thing that we appeal is to avoid, to avoid a lot of speculation. The American embassy should also provide the crimes committed. They should tell you why they are refusing your visa. Sure. Because if they are doing the type of job which is a mafia job here now. This is more or less a mafia job. Because when you just name a man with dignity and just leave him to flow without telling us that on this date, on this particular date, mm -hmm. you as the Attorney General connived to sell drugs or to release drug dealers. Like in the case of Uganda, 
Mr. Kutesa cannot fly to the United States mm -hmm. because there is, the man is in jail. He's waiting. In the case they find him around the toilet of America and they put you in the third toilet. Mm -hmm. This is how our foreign minister has been reduced. A Ugandan foreign minister cannot fly to the United States of America. Yeah, basically, I, I think what they've done to um, Amos Wako and uh, I mean by extension his family is more of like mob lynching where they are not given an opportunity. They are not specific. I mean, everybody is really asking about this. Uh, because again, if they were interested in letting Kenya or the world to know about Emos Wako and his involvement apparently in corrupt deals, then they should have even gone ahead and given us the specifics so that we can understand what kind of crimes Emos Wako has probably committed. Because again, as it is now, it just remains as it is. I mean, we cannot authenticate exactly what is it that he has ever done. But like you've given Dr. Mazanga an example of the, the, the patterns that we are seeing in the rest of the African countries, looking onto the, to the demonstration that we are seeing today in the uh, coastal region in Kenya. You understand, Dr. Masanga, that um, naturally it is not possible to conduct, I mean, such kind of demonstrations. They are actually a precursor to regime change. Can I tell you one thing? Yes. Hold your, your fire there. Mm. To go under fire an application in the court through a lawyer, is about 400,000 shillings. The poor man who was speaking on TV here from the coast, that short guy, whoever he is, I don't want, I don't go into shortiness or tallness or whatever. <laughs> but the man sponsored, money must be coming from an NGO supporting. Why have the American, the George Soros chosen Mombasa as a soft spot? of launching his campaign for regime change. Why? Because in Kibra, it's impossible to do it. Raira has consolidated Kibra. Mm -hmm. Raira has made it impossible for Kibra to have any demonstration. It is difficult to hold a demonstration without Kibra in this city. I get the point now. See what it is. <laughs> it is impossible. And anybody arguing, arguing with that, I have data. If you start again, I throw it out. Because I know who George Soros. Now, what George Soros has done, and before Kenyans, before we go, there is a party, a political party in Kenya. A new one. Not very old, but not very new which is now George Soros' son. Yeah. Those who are watching, taking notes, take them. Mm -hmm. There's a political party in Kenya that is relying on the finances of George Soros. And they are negative about everything, Jubilee, BIODM, there is a political party. Watch the pattern. Recently, the leaders of that political party went to meet even George Soros, managing director. Uh, and Dr. Masanga, maybe to some... Check place. properly. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, go. they went to meet, they met... The agents of George Soros. Yes. Mr. Masang, if I may really want to know this from you, because again, even for some of our viewers who are watching, they may not be in a position really to understand what is the interest that maybe George Soros and uh, his allies have uh, maybe for Kenya or even the countries that they want to bring down. What is the greatest interest really they have for this, uh, in these countries? In Kenya, in 2007, Kenya had a turmoil. Mm -hmm. Mr. George Soros was around Nairobi. He went to Kibaki, he went everywhere. You remember the agreement that was being made mm -hmm. between Raira mm -hmm. and... I am happy that Makao Mutua, at last, has seen the light and has come back home to develop Kitui with a very nice hotel. And uh, we seized the fire because he's no longer very much attached to George Soros. 
but it was George Soros conduit number one because it was Open Society Foundation paying his tickets to go yeah. through ICC to go under train investigators. Yeah. Now, if you look at why they are interested in Kenya, is they never got to the people they want here. 2017 elections, Raida Amaro Dinga lost. The second run-up election, he did not take part. They had earmarked Kofi Annan and them had earmarked His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Me, I don't tell lies. Mm -hmm. He was also equally a conduit of George Soros. But the handshake wiped out this enmity. Yeah. All of us came on one page and we are here. Now they don't have any. They came. They, 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 they came and funded Punguza, Punguza. Punguza Muzigo. Aha! Have you seen? Yeah. If, I don't know why Kenyans don't, don't take these things seriously. The Punguza Muzigo initiative, have you heard about it again? They've gone back to the drawing board. Where? To they're, draw what? They are saying that they are coming back with a, another um, initiative uh, that is titled Punguza Muzigo Kenya. And it will be launched, I believe, somewhere early December. Uh, that is to the information. On, on what? Uh, they, that they have looked into the recommendations and the reasons why some counties, um, really oh, oh, 45 counties rejected the Punguza Muzigo initiative and the two counties passed. So they have looked into all the resolutions that were passed, the recommendations rather that came with the... Um, they will just be giving us a report. A passage and rejection. Of but it has been rejected. Yeah. <laughs> it is as good as dead. <laughs> Dead on arrival. <laughs> yes, no, not even on arrival. It has not. It will not. It even never. Arrive. It will not. Even but arrive. I want you to learn one thing in the political science. Yes. That why did this thing pass very quickly in Eldoret? Why? Governor Madago of all people. Who gave Governor Madago the authority to pass? It's the members of the county assembly that debate and and passed. They said that uh, the people of Wasengishu have given them a nod to actually pass. They didn't even read it. <laughs> they hurriedly passed it. No, they did not read it, mm -hmm. boss. Because the deal, the deal was struck. You know, George Soros has been trying to penetrate to divide this government yeah. into several patterns. And the George Soros sponsors, you know, he doesn't, he sponsors chaos and at the same time sponsors peace. He did, he's a man who sponsors both. Mm -hmm. He gives you money and he comes to give you the other one also money. Be careful. Look at where the money came from. Remember, George Soros is a businessman. He's in telecoms. Did you remember the story where they wanted to divide the Safaricom? I remember. Uh huh. Who wanted to take a bit of the Safaricom? Which French company? Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me before we wind up. Mm -hmm. Which French company? There was a French company that actually came in to take telecom. This Safaricom would have gone before Bob Colimo goes down, Safaricom was going. I know the gentlemen who were behind it. Uh, uh, let me ask one of the companies mm -hmm. From Paris, it is still here. It's George Soros' company. Operating in Kenya? Oh, yes. So can you give a friendly company mm -hmm. to be operating your telephone calls? Not at all. I don't think it's a good idea. It's never. It's never a good idea. <laughs> so have you seen where we, we kill ourselves? Yes, yes. Have you seen how we make a bed like a basic, you made a bed long time ago, which is sleeping on. 
I can see how you have actually connected those lines. <laughs> <laughs> we made a bed. Mm -hmm. We are sleeping on it. So these are basically problems that we actually we, we made ourselves. Yeah. Look at what the regime change is arriving through the coast. Jeffrey Smith entered through Lunga Lunga back to Mombasa. Yeah. You go to Tanzania, he's always in Tanzania in Arusha. I can give you the hotel number, the details. This, so you can, how long should a man talk? I've talked. And some of them think that's a joke, she childish. So you leave it. This guy is here, was there. You go to Arusha across. Jeffrey Smith is always across here. How many people is he training for regime change in Kenya? Jesus Christ, we pray. I've done my best. I'm a Pan-African. I stand by my Pan-African zeal. May God help me. Keep me. Your final remarks. But again, before the final remarks, I, I think you better read the people's there, messages. This comment, uh, I, I think I would like to get your view on that because it's a question. Uh, morning uh, from USA, that is that Dr. Masanga is asking the question. Uh, African leaders have let us down for a very long uh, time, for too long rather. Why we, the Africans, wanted to be between others and not move on on our own? He's pointing at uh, the problem the that same, we are having. The proxy war? Yes. Why, why doesn't he see it? Why are Africans, we can't be on our own? Mm -hmm. Because we are already divided by the same superpowers. Sure. America removes, puts sanctions on you. You are forced to go to borrow from China. So when you are in China, what do you do? The Americans come and say, if you want to get this, leave the loan. They look at the Chinese investment in Africa in a negative way. So you are left with in the middle. You can't be this way, you can't be that way. The only leaders who brought Africa together are dead. Most of the leaders are dead. Mm -hmm. Fid, uh, Fidel Castro, Indira Gandhi, Nehru Gandhi, Field Marshal Tito of Yugoslavia, the non aligned movement, Gabriel Nawasa, Emperor Heislaus, Sekuture, Cabro, Samora Machel, Kwame Nkrumah, pa Kwame Nkrumah Milton Oboti, Julius, jo Julius Nyerere, Jomo Kenyatta, look at the sons, Benebera, look at them. The standing giants of Africa, Robert Mugabe, Nelson Mandela to some extent, they are gone. There is no more patriotism anymore left. There is no Pan-Africanism left. Baba Tafaa Baleo. Look at the sons of Africa who stood who fought for this continent to rise and shine. Today, we have people, apart from Kenyatta, John Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta, the rest don't talk. When they reach, look at Assisi. General Assisi, Arifat Assisi, is helping General Khalifa Hafta to avoid a regime change in Libya. Cairo. Because if he doesn't say what the Americans want, they will send George Soros. Didn't George Soros say he removed Mubarak? Yeah, he did. Look at that. Go the mayor. Those are the people who, women who used to speak for Nana aligned the movement. To refix Ali Buto. Khan of Bangladesh. Shaki Mujib Rahman. Look at those men. The 
they used to speak Mahatir. They used to speak, they stand up, they speak for non-alignment. We've lost them. We've, the question you have asked mm -hmm. falls under that category. Sure. Okay. We have become loafers, loafing between the rich, the indebted, the dated, the debts. When we go to China, we are told that there is a problem. I've forgotten another lady in the former country called Ceylon, which is now called Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. There was a powerful lady there who used to speak for Africa. The Kamuzi borders who could stand on their own, we've lost them. We've lost Siadibare. These are leaders who could make a stand. Today, African leaders are called, even smaller countries where people are still sleeping on the cardboard, they call African leaders for summit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shouting, and when you come on my wall and you start saying I'm shouting, Mr. Philip Omondi, I'm not shouting. I'm just talking, and that's how we talk. So I don't know what your question is. We have been speaking about Uganda. Maybe replay the tape. It is online. You can play it back. You'll see we have spoken about Uganda. We've lost leaders in, in the whole Africa. They can't, we can't unite. We have talked about Uganda's difficulties. Yeah. There are over 2,000 people who have actually been shortlisted for embargo in the United States of America. It's a tragedy to be in Africa and to be born in Africa. Can I end up that way? Sure. It is a tragedy. Can you quote this forever? Yes, it's a it's tragedy. It's a tragedy to be born in Africa and to be an African. African. Because it seems that everything which is bad is associated with yes. us. Even where we are doing well, we are earmarked for discipline. Does it worry you that if it was an African country that went to Ukraine to buy intelligence material mm -hmm. to fix its friend, a rival in politics, they would ban that man from traveling to the United States of America. Are you not hearing? Are you not hearing the impeachment of Trump? What is Trump's impeachment? What does it mean to you in Africa? Why should the ambassador lecture to us about Wako when his president is stealing intelligence from Ukraine? A cyber crime thief. Am I wrong? You're right. And He's on. It is there. Switch on your TV and see people saying this is a cyber crime thief. Trump is a cyber crime thief who went to 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 use American arms to steal material and a software to bring it to the states in order to bring down Joe Biden. Is that not a big crime? It is a big it crime. It is worse than crime against humanity. Yeah. Because how many people would be involved who lose their jobs? So many. Uh, so if it was an African president, the American would have issued adversary note. Don't deal with that man. Because he's a crime thief, he's a cyber crime thief. Muizi and Eva software. <laughs> a whole president of the United States stealing software from Ukraine. You remember the prediction uh, somewhere in 2016 
when we are having the show regarding uh, I mean the election of uh, Now you will believe Trump. me <laughs> Did I tell did and I tell you that the Trump will not finish It was a disaster I did ah I agreed with when we did it up to morning yeah, with you yes, yes. But I said he has won this election but, but Mr may, Trump may not might not finish his term of office Yeah It's coming Because this one is a, a cyber thief Muizi ya software a whole president stealing software in africa they would ban you and give refuse a visa and profile almost the entire country they, no they, they profile the whole country that yeah. this country is corrupt yeah. what did trump do corruption corruption of the highest degree and that's what nancy pelosi was saying yesterday yeah. he corrupted the people He corrupted ambassadors. He told them not to say it's a very serious judge shit that America should spend time explaining to us how a first world president can go and steal cyber information from Ukraine to come and win an election. Yet they tell us to have a free and a fair election. Isn't it painful for you, an African out there? Is indeed painful for you, an African, where people in Biafra are dying on a daily basis, being pulled, tied on cars, rolled by Nigerian army through the streets of Onita, and Onigu, Port Harcourt, Lagos. People are being beaten up in daytime. Is indeed a shame for you, as an African, to see such a thing happen in your country. Isn't it a shame for you as an African to see people in Amazonia tied, killed, maimed, 10,000 of them, women and the children who have not gone to school for a long time, for four years, children are in their bushes. Isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame for you in South Sudan to see over 384,000 people killed by rebel armies, supported by United States of America, doesn't it serve you as an African, as a not, that this world is not ours? And this world is not our home. This Can you finish the song that was sung by Jimmy? Is it Jimmy Reeves? Not Jimmy Reeves. That song, I don't know. I'm not a, a music lover. Mm -hmm. I'm a music rumba lover. Mm -hmm. But there is this song this, which says, this world is not my home. I think Jimmy Reeves, if I'm not. Yes, Jimmy Reeves. I'm, I'm, I'm not bad in... in, in, in the memory is sharp. No, yeah, my history is very clear mm -hmm. because... Things like the ICC statue, I, you know it, it is in the head. Yeah. <laughs> and all this, this world is not my home. I am just passing through. Mm. The angels become me. You can Google it and yeah. we do it uh, here. That is it. <laughs> we can Google it. Because there are two songs that always bring me to joy when I talk about Africa. One of them mm -hmm. is by the rivers of Babylon. Oh. <laughs> By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Oh, we wept when we remember Kagera. You see, we used to be in the Uganda National Liberation Army. Yes. And we were being taught, you know, um, when you sing that song, I mean, soldiers were hearing, they kill you. <laughs> Because the I mean, soldiers were reminded of Kagera, yeah. the river Kagera, where they crossed and died in numbers, huge numbers, yes. during the Liberation War. And another one said, across the bridge. You said it's by Jim? Jim Reeves. Yes, yes. true. You're right. Am I? You are. Give me five, <laughs> my brother. Thank you very much, viewers. That is how we are. Diplomatic Leaks returns next week. On Tuesday, yeah. it could be night, mm. but today we have shifted it to daytime. And I thank you, thousands and millions of you watching, those who will continue watching. 
we hit the mark of 200 per second, yeah. 225 per second. Very good. That's it. We have said it. Yeah, sure. We saw it. And we have no regrets. We are caught in a proxy war. Yeah. East or West, United States is fighting with China over tariffs. The economies of Africa are shrinking. And they have shifted that fight now to yes, Africa. Yes, to see where mm -hmm. China has put its assets. Yeah. Why is China encroaching on their traditional friendship? Yeah, because they know, the U.S. knows it too well, that if uh, they destabilize Kenya, and then the assets by the, uh, the assets and investment by China cannot thrive in Africa or in Kenya, yeah. specifically. So wind it up, and I go home. Very well, thank you so much, Dr. Masanga, and most of you have been view watching us and sending in your comments. There are so, so many, of course, we've managed to read a few of them. Baise Manuel says, speak on, speak on Dr. Masanga. Africans and the world are listening. God bless you and my country, Biafra. Uh, Biafra means light and life to me. And another one here who goes by the name uh, Madere Andom says, long live Dr. Masanga. Um, something has just happened with my, I mean, with my system over here. I can't quite go through all the comments. But again, thank you so much for watching and everyone who's made this program a success. This was Diplomatic Leaks coming to you live from Punchline Africa TV right here in Nairobi and London. It's been a pleasure having you on board and giving us company during this programming. My name is Samuel Tawish. Now I have to hand it over to Dr. Masanga to wind it up officially. Dr. Masanga, over to you. There's nothing much to wind up. You've done it very well. Yeah. Thank you very much, viewers, wherever you are. Some of these things that we have said, we have no personal hatred for the United States. We love what they do, but we hate their policies. Their policies are not geared towards us. Their policies are geared and, and towards antagonizing the same, same unity that we have. There was no need for United States to issue a corruption charge sheet when Mr. Wako is going to stand among Kenyans to read the BBI report. It was a very sore state and it must be condemned. Diplomats in Kenya and foreign and the Commonwealth of Peace should summon the American ambassador to give them the reasons as to why they are actually interfering in our affairs. Exactly. Thank you. If they don't do that, don't say Matanga never said it. This station, therefore, is for Africa. Uh, with Africa by, by Africa. Africa. Charles. must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. <laughs>